stop at night. And it's very, very difficult to get any continuity as an actor. Um, whereas, if you've got a big part and you're continuously in the studio, then that's very, very much easier. So it's not, why actors look at scripts? The first thing they do is they want to know how many lines they've got. And there's a very the reason for that is it's so much easier to be good in a big part. I think that's also why actors, if you, there's the perennial question about do you prefer stage or television? And I think the other general answer is that they like stage, and I think it's very much for the same reason, because you're there consistently in one go, doing the part, having a development of the character <coughs> during the course of, what, an hour, two and a half hours, whatever. I don't actually like to do stage oh. work. <laughs> um, uh, only because it's my body clock. I, I do hate having to work at night. I, I just don't like it. I, when I come five o'clock, I'm ready for a pint of beer and to, to relax. And I'm, I work hard all day long, but that shouting and waving your hands around at night, oh no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, mother. I, mean, I, quite, I quite enjoy it. I enjoy the rehearsal, but... Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Could we have one last time, please? Oh, come. Oh, oh. <coughs> we'll, we'll just come to the lunch break and keep going. <laughs> Lisa, are we going to see um, Vanessa Summerfield on DVD? Uh, that, that DVD's been talked about for about 10 years now. I, I honestly don't think it will ever happen. Um, I would love it if it did. Um, like anything, it's the funding, the finance, whether enough people... Because obviously, the difference between audio and visual and financially is absolutely huge. And to do something really well, and really properly, it would cost a lot of money. So, I'd love to guarantee about you and ten other of everybody's friends to <laughs> guarantee to, um, to buy it. And um, I'm never going to say never, apart from the fact I'd probably be paying her grandmother uh, when it would actually be happening. But uh, who knows? But certainly not, a, not in the foreseeable future, as far as I know. But thank you for asking. Can we squeeze them one last one for four games? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Uh, Mark, you were in the Saint Woods in the 80s. Do you treat it to work, work, do you see, with a really bad cold? Sorry, I didn't quite get that. You were in the, uh, you were playing a part in the Saint in the 80s. Oh yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't say, yeah, no, I had a poorly cold, yeah, I, I had flu. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, yeah, yeah. I, I was in the Saint, I think, eight years ago. Well, I have one more question. Gentlemen at the back, from the other side, that gentleman has had his hand up for ages. Hey. We'll, we'll, we'll do two. We'll do two. We'll do a quick. We'll be all right. We'll yeah. I would like to tell you all, Mr. Lumber. Yes. Um, you know, I just, I just, oh no, in the um, um, original TV series of um, of, of um, Doctor Who, um, you, as as we all know, you 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 played one of the um, 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 very few um, male companions in it. So, um, do you think that um, your um, um, character would have um, got on on um, on with them? Um, Jaime, who was um, very successful and um, and pop um, your companion. Do you think um, the um, characters of um, Solo and Jaime would have got on set together? Thank you. Did you want to work with any of the other male yeah. companions? Sorry? Thank you, but do you want to work with any of the other male companions? Yeah, no, no, I, no, I don't like work with um, well, any of the male companions and Jamie and things like that. I mean, I, I, I've, I've, done, I've done conventions with, uh, for example, Fraser, and he's gorgeous, but... Um, <laughs> Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you get on with them. Yeah, I get, I get on with everybody, yeah. Um, and it's well enjoyed working with Doctor Who, it's so nice, such nice people. Um, everybody's nice on, 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 on Doctor Who. In fact, most actors are really nice, because if you're a pain at the arse, you don't get to work. <laughs> um, it's only Americans who can be pains at the arse to get away with it. Um, and so basically, if any of you are aspiring actors, there are two things you need to be, right? You need to know your lines and be on time. It has helped if you've got some talent, but it is not the most important thing, right? <laughs> okay, know your lines and be on time, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. any bold moments about being an actor? No, you just covered it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to need to take your photos. Oh, yeah. And you need to yeah. stay fast. Well, that last question from the gentleman there. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this is a big finished question for the both of you. Uh, um, Mark Strickson first. Um, we last saw you at Swansea 
And we put the idea to you, a big finish, adapting the book of Turnham and the Earth Big Dilemma. That'd be a big part for you. Have you got any further with battery big finish about that? No, no, I haven't any further. <laughs> <laughs> and, for, uh, and for Lisa, have you thought of doing the, the, the companion to almost work? Because out of the back room there, you have Christopher Owen, who was the earthling at the end of Meg. And they go off on their own little journey and you never saw their adventures. So what do you do on Christopher Owen from the Earthman's point of view? How he get doctor? I'm trying to work out what the other question was. <laughs> um, I got the answer. Tell you what, those use the microphone and I thought... And I, I got that. So I was doing a companion kind of puzzle with sort of more minor characters. So, oh, which actually then the... Not with Sarah. That was actually a specific question by one of the other guys here. I tell you what, uh, yes, uh, but sometimes you get minor characters that suddenly turn up in Doctor Who that fire their imagination. And I'm going to do one last plus because in, the, in a couple of weeks' time, I did a companion chronicle with Jay Gill and Lightfoot. Um, from the Pet Towns of Wang Chai, which is uh, Chris Benjamin and Trevor Baxter. And it is brilliant. I hear that it's fantastic. It is fantastic, and it's funny, and they're a joy to work with. And the potential, you suddenly find these characters, all like Sarah Kingston characters, that suddenly come to life and, and fire the imagination of, of writers. And uh, certainly in terms of other characters, I'm sure there, there are little characters that. People, I mean, you might make a suggestion to Big Finish if you think that there are a character that you would mind exploring. I think you and I should do one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely. That would be lovely. Uh, yeah. I, could, I, could, I could use my time for anything. Well, look, it's very really, nice. Thank you all for coming. It's lovely to see you. Um, I hope you're having a good day. Um, and and we're, we're, we're about. So I think we're signing up in the time. We are, we are. We are, we are signing the time. Lunch notes, same English. Hooray, lunch! Lunch, lunch. Again, I've done well for this. If you're up, I can't see it, but I, I, I'm working on a man called Peter with me. If you're out there, Peter, come and have some lunch. Please, Lisa Bowen.